In this video, we're going to look at how we can calculate the energy that's stored on a capacitor. So here we've got a capacitor, and it's been charged up, so it's got a potential difference of V over it, and it's got charge Q stored on its plate. You may recall from uh, electrons, waves and photons that the amount of work done on a charge is equal to the charge that's on it multiplied by the potential that it's been moved through. If we were to do this for a capacitor and select some point here where we've got a, a potential difference of V and we've got a charge Q, on first analysis we could be tempted to, to think that the amount of work that's been done on this charge is QV. Hopefully in the rest of this video we are going to explore why just this simple analysis of what W equals QV isn't true for a capacitor. If we take this uh, capacitor here, we can see that we've already started to charge it. Once the charging of the capacitor has begun, the addition of electrons to the negative plate involves doing work against the repulsive forces of the electrons which are already there. Equally, the removal of electrons from the positive plate requires that work is done against the attractive forces of the positive charges on that plate. The work which is done is stored in the form of electrical potential energy. If we consider this circuit here, I've got a source of EMF which is going to be able to do work on the charges on the plates of the capacitor. So to begin with, I've got to overcome, I've got to do some work to overcome the attractive force of the positive plate, and as I move around the circuit, I have to do work against the repulsive force of the negative plate in order to move this electron onto it. So now I've extended the graph up to, to this point. Hopefully what we can see now is, as we're charging it up, the positive plate has become more positive, the negative plate has become more negative. So in order to move the next piece of charge, I have to do even more work against the attractive forces and even more work against the repulsive forces to get it to there. And then finally, in order to get this last charge, to go, I have to do even more work because I've got an even more positive plate and I have to do even more work against the repulsion because I've got an even more negative plate here. So, in order to get a charge Q onto the capacitor with a potential difference of V, hopefully what we can see is as the charge increases, the potential difference over the plate also increases. So what we can see is, in order to get charge Q on the plate, there was an average potential difference over the plates of V over 2. So the amount of work we've actually had to do is going to be a half Q V. A slightly more formal analysis of this is, if we take a capacitor that is partly charged with charge Q, and we're just going to increase the charge by delta Q, then we're hopefully we can see that the, the, the amount that the voltage, the potential difference has increased by, is very small. So the amount of extra work done, delta W, is going to equal V delta Q. And that is going to be the area of this rectangle here. If we continue to do this, just get the right tool, then hopefully you can see, as we charge this plate up, then all of these extra little bits of work we're having to do are going to add up and that's going to equal the amount of enti the entire work we're going to have to do charging the plate. And hopefully what you can see is that we're describing the area of the triangle and of course the area of a triangle is half the base times the height so the total amount of work done we're going to get is a half QV which is obviously what we got from the previous analysis. Now we've got a formula for the work done on, the, on charging a capacitor is a half QV and hopefully for, you can remember from the first video that the charge stored on a capacitor is the capacitance multiplied by the potential difference over the capacitor. Now what we can do in order to get a, a different formula, a second formula for the work done on the charges on a capacitor is we can substitute this formula into this formula giving us W 
equals one half CV squared. And you will find on your formula and relationships booklet that this one and this one. So finally, we're just gonna do a quick worked example. So if we take this circuit here, which has got a capacitor of capacitance 470 microfarads, and it's charged up, so it's got a potential difference over it of six volts. And we wanna calculate how much work uh, has been done charging this capacitor. First thing we need to do is we've got to select uh, which equation we're going to use. Well, we know the capacitance, so we've got C equals 470 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and we've got a voltage V of 6.0 volts. We don't know anything about the charge, so this is the equation we're going for. We don't need this one. Um, where's my original colour? There he is. So if we just put this in, so we've got the amount of work done is going to equal one half times the capacitance, 470 times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by 6 squared, which is 36, and that should give us a result of 8.5 times 10 to the minus 3 joules.